It's just after 9 p.m. Let's go out for a walk. Alone. Let's go check out the church. Climbing up a long hill road, I finally arrive at the church. It's a dark night. Even though there isn't a single cloud, the moon is dark. The only light seems to be coming from the church. Oh, it's Bazette. There is the ghost of a woman standing in the square. I'm reminded of a supernatural willow. Oh my. I'm dreaming. Since when was I in a dream? This is the first time I have seen her. I have never met her before, yet I feel I know this woman very well. The woman passes beside me as if nothing happened. I watch the ghost absent-mindedly. There is no need to rush after it. After all, this is a dream. Even if I try, it will probably just vanish like a phantom when I catch up. Plus, these things are in the way. I hear the chorus that I am so used to. Even though someone told me not to come here alone, I seem to have forgotten that warning. However, I am lucky this time. Lucky that this is just a dream and soon I will awake to my usual ceiling. <coughs> Brutal claws run through my liver. Stomach. Like a strawberry stuck with a fork. Legs. They pass through my joints, arriving at the face and neck. Neck. I no longer have a throat and cannot manage to scream, only the sound of air escaping. Help! Ah! Brain slashed out. Because I am in so much pain, because the situation is so vexing, I want to take my frustration out on some stuffed animal. Stabbing the silly non-resistant toy with a kitchen knife, a slaughtering act that anyone can do, simple and tasteless. I feel sick with it, nauseous, now that I am playing the part of the stuffed animal. Oh, I'm alright. This is a dream. Now, as soon as this crunching incident ends, it will be as if it never happened. Because it will have never happened. Because I will wake up in my next form. Well... Let's restart! There's a new scene with Ryder in her room. I'll go visit Ryder. She's probably reading as usual. Oi, Ryder! <laughs> oh, great timing! Are you free right now? Just as I'm about to ask her that, she slips right by me. On it. As if she has something to do, she walks by rapidly. Oh well, so much for that. Maybe I'll just drink some tea by myself. I've run into Ryder again. I'll make some tea for her too, just in case. Since the teapot's still full of hot water, I quickly brew some roasted green tea. Stylist, I bring the tea into the living room and offer some to Ryder. I'm not sure what I'm so surprised about, but the revelation does drive me into a temporary stupor. Well, Ryder is a woman in her prime after all. It's no surprise she'd go to a salon, but for a beauty like her to go to the same place in Miyama frequented by Homurahara students... Eh? 
自分一人で手入れするのも大変ですので週に2回ほどの周期で時間をかけてトリートメントをしてもらっているのです。Rider's hair Now that I think about it, I certainly feel like touching her ever waving smooth strands of hair. It would be so nice to run my hands through them just once. No down, boy! That's a good way to get yourself killed. Maybe it's a rider's hair that's not going to be able to get it. No, it's not going to be able to get it. So, Rider sips at her tea. Later, I'm not going to be able to get it. 髪は元通りになりますならそうすればいいんじゃ髪程度の問題でさくらに負担をかけたくはありませんですので本当に面倒ですが髪の手入れは自分で解決しなくてはなりません正直乱れたままだと私も機嫌が悪くなりますからそっかいろいろ大変なんだな女の人ってそう言っていただけるのはありがたいのですが、シロ、気にかけるのでしたら、私よりもさくらを優先してください。私は彼女のサーバントにすぎませんから。さくらはあなたに気遣いされれば喜びます。私も、そう言ってあなたたちを見ているのは嬉しい。あ、そうか。頑張る。え指導には戦いより難しいでしょうが尽力してください打足ですがそういうあなたを見るのも楽しいですから She said something scary a little too easily ええっとさくらには十分気を使うとしてたな盗作あたりはどうなんだろうあいつも美容室に行ってるのかな彼女には余計なお世話だと思います That was quick 誤解なきようにリンは努力を表さない性格です美容の苦心を指導に知られれば侮辱されたと思うでしょうああなるほど A swan's feet is what they say As for the remaining members of the women's squad じゃあセイバーは微妙ですね私が行けといえば喧嘩になりますがシローが言えば忠告と取るでしょう。It is indeed quite difficult to predict how it would unfold. She would probably say something along the lines of I like this hairstyle or possibly other hairstyles do not fit me. で、フジネはどうかな<笑> Really, what would that be like? 喜ぶかもしれませんよ。はい。ですから。喜ぶかもしれませんあまり化粧をする人柄ではありませんが嫌いではないようですしシローが美容室に行きたいといえば2つ返事で同行するのではないでしょうか<笑> Wait Doesn't that imply that I would be the one going for a makeover and not Fujine? もしもの話はここまでにしておこうでライダーはこれから美容室は午後からですそれまでのんびりしています And so she proceeds to set camp in front of the TV 各言う私はあまり好きではないのですが She says softly Not fond of what? The beauty salon? なんでだ生き慣れてるっぽいじゃないか美容室そうなのですが鏡がありますからあ There are indeed a lot of mirrors in a hair salon Rider's true name is Medusa Her tail includes a defeat with a mirror-like shield 伝説で言うところの鏡の盾だっけ石化の魔眼を跳ね返したっていうのは According to the Greek mythology, Medusa had her mystic eyes blocked by Perseus' shield and was defeated by having her head cut off or something like that. Hmm? So does that mean? Rider, when you cut your hair, you can cut your hair. So, you can cut your hair with your hair, but you can't cut your hair with your hair. Rider, you can't cut your hair with your hair. No. When you look at your hair, 
私は石化しませんからペルセウスは鏡に映った風景を頼りにして私と戦ったのです直接私と目を合わせないためにああなるほど Perseus shield did not reflect the mystic eyes He merely made them ineffective by avoiding eye contact. ん?でも、それだと何で鏡が苦手なんだ別に鏡に倒されたってわけでもないんだし、嫌うのはわかるけど、苦手っていうのは行き過ぎじゃないか。それがそうでもないのです。女神の盾は魔眼は封じられずと
Although favored by the gods, Perseus, who had yet to prove himself as a hero, could not bear the sight of it. Perseus ran deeper into the palace as if he were escaping. His dreams of slaying the monster gloriously were long gone. Any longing for fame had long since left his mind. He only wanted one thing, find the monster, take its head and escape from the island as quickly as possible. The stale air was burning his skin and his feet were slowly melting away where they had touched the ground. Simply stopping would spell certain defeat. The foolish challenger would perish as the monster slept quietly inside the palace. Holding his breath, suppressing the scream rising in his throat, Perseus hid in the shadows as he advanced. The palace was enormous. No, it was excessively huge. Seemingly enchanted, it had no beginning and no end. This terrifying palace only revealed Perseus' own insignificance. Yes, it was not that the palace was grand. It was just that Perseus, shivering and alone, was like a tiny insect to its inhabitant. And so, a few minutes, no, hours later, the mirror shield warned Perseus. The shield reflected the surroundings on its mirror-like surface. A detector of sorts, the shield shows the dark palace's layout as well as Perseus' own heartbeat. And the heartbeat of a nearby monster fast approaching. The view distorted. A grotesque creature emerged from the darkness. Yet one cannot stare at it directly. Perseus used self-suggestion to force himself to look at nothing but the shield until the very end. It was already too late to back away. A fight was inevitable. Seconds later, Perseus flew through the air and issued his challenge to the monster. And then, he suddenly realized that something about the legend was off. This place was inhabited by three beautiful sisters. But the shield showed only two heartbeats, his and the monsters in front of him. Then, the heartbeats of the petrifying snake prince's two sisters. Just where could they have disappeared to? Whoa! A gigantic something came, pulverizing the forest of stone statues in its way. That was the Gorgon, the monster Perseus sensed. Perseus threw a volley of curses. You damn gods, what use is this glory you promised me? There was no victory to be found in this fight from the beginning. The monster had already nearly matured enough to be called an evil god. On this impossible mission, the cleverest of noble phantasms were nothing but life-saving equipment at best. It was not unlike a ship caught in a storm. Being toyed with by the raging waves, Perseus was struggling only to survive. There was no way to win, no weapons to defeat the enemy. A battle of attrition. It may have been possible for a true hero, but Perseus, who had hoped to become one through his victory here, had no means to destroy the Gorgon. Perseus, who still possesses the nature of a human. The only way he could slay the Gorgon would be... Perseus continued to avoid fatal hits using his winged sandals, escaping the petrifying glares and dodging the blows from the monstrous arms. But that was all he could do. The monster did not feel threatened by this new offering. It was no more than a mere nuisance. Finally having enough of the fighting, it opened up its own palace. Breaker Gorgon Self-sealing temple of darkness. A great magical barrier, a complement to the blood fort that enveloped the shapeless eye. Just as the blood fort enveloped the world, the temple of darkness sealed it. The person caught inside would have his consciousness imprisoned within the mind of the Gorgon and would be rid of any abilities he might have had in the outside world. The Temple of Darkness, unlike the Mystic Eyes, only needed a steady supply of magical energy from the Gorgon to draw one in. Perseus had no way to avoid it. It had total control over him. The monster, without even focusing on the fight, could... And the only way to fell the monster 
is to let it encage itself. Kibisis, the bag that is said to have carried Medusa's head. In an instant, it swelled up, turned inside out and swallowed Perseus whole. The concepts of the world inverted, the inside of the bag became outside and the outside became inside. Now, what was inside wasn't the bag's contents, but, in fact, the outside. The Gorgon's Temple of Darkness was aimed inside itself. That prison became a mirror that reflected the Gorgon who was outside the bag. The monster's movement stopped. Trapped in the Temple of Darkness created by itself, startled by a nightmare of its inner wounds, the Gorgon suffered as Medusa. A nightmare beyond all nightmares, the monster despaired at the reflection in the mirror of its own self from the time when it still had a sense of self-awareness. And then and there came the one counter-attack. Immortality subverting Harp sliced through the neck of the completely paralyzed Snake Princess. The invincible monster became Medusa again due to its own heart and, as if waking up from a dream, was struck down all too quickly. She continues sipping her tea. She has just recited a story about her own beheading, yet she keeps an unprecedented level of calm. そっか。鏡が苦手なのは言うまでもないでしょう。なるほど。別に見ても she mutters about having an urge to break every mirror she sees. Such an adolescent is an unusually emotional choice of words for Ryder, though. Wakazo なにしろ、Ryder thinks intently as if digging up his image from the depths of her memories. And not long after, she raises her head, seemingly surprised at the answer she came up with herself. Oh boy. Ah, that conjures up an extremely clear image in my head. Having had the barrier turned inside out by Kibisis, Ryder ended up sealed in her own Temple of Darkness. Anyone caught in the Temple of Darkness is said to experience a nightmare that has taboo and delight both mixed in it. However, I wonder what kind of a vision was it that left her with a trauma this deep? あ、いや、悪かっ
Ryder straightens her posture once again, but she still remains hunched over ever so slightly. Ack, it must be an ever greater challenge to endure than the story of being beheaded. Sono... 